We have reached the point where Jesus has been betrayed by Judas. He has been denied by Peter. He has been arrested uh, by this unruly mob that has been led by the religious establishment of his day. And then in verse 2 and 3 and 4, we have this encounter with Pilate himself. And Pilate asks him the question that we might anticipate, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, you have said so. Now, that's enigmatic, isn't it? And a great debate takes place over whether just exactly what Jesus meant here. Let me tell you what I think he meant. Let me tell you, I think, what is a faithful paraphrase of it, that instead of it reading, you have said so, uh, we might, it might read, it is as you say. It is as you say. In other words, Jesus is not dodging this. He is affirming the fact. That was his very purpose. Jesus was, was not suggesting for a moment what contemporary pluralistic philosophy in America suggests routinely. Jesus was not suggesting that he was here for a short period of time to say something that was kind of godlike and helpful, as if he was only one of a number of those who would come throughout history, each one building upon the other, and each one able to speak with equal clarity concerning what it means to know God. Jesus does not allow us that as a possibility. So actually, what we have in this little encounter that goes on for a while is not so much the trial before Pilate, as the trial of Pilate. Because as we're going to see, Pilate is pushed to make a decision, as is every man and woman pushed to make a decision when they come up against Jesus of Nazareth. He's forced now to have to come to terms with who this person is. Who are you? What do you mean for this purpose you've come into the world, that everybody who listens to you is, knows the truth? Are you saying you're the truth? that truth is embodied in you? What is the truth? And of course, you know that he pushed back, and he tried to dodge, and he tried to weave, and he's, he's down in history on account of that. Do you think we would have known this one particular Roman governor were it not for his encounter with Jesus here? He is immortalized in the saying of the creed. We said it this morning. We mentioned his name. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. That's the only reason we know him, because he was confronted by the challenge of Jesus, as men and women are this morning, as you are in listening to the sound of my voice. You and I, each of us, have to come to the point where we determine who is Jesus, why did he come, what did he do, and does it even matter? It will not be enough for us to try and fudge the decision off as Pilate did. There are no bowls available in the auditorium at the moment for the washing of our hands of the responsibility. There is no place for us to hide. There is no place that we can ultimately hide from God. Jesus stands in the hall of Pilate, waiting for Pilate to make a decision. One day, Pilate will stand in the hall of Jesus, and Jesus will pronounce the verdict. 